I will be going Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, I love that. Thank you so much. Wow. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's a treat to see you all again, so somewhat. Uh, as you can see, I've broken my glasses. So uh, I'm gonna be, hopefully they'll stay on my face for a little while. <laughs> so that we've been working with a wonderful work called Practical Metaphysics, A New Insight and Truth by Eric Butterworth. And Eric Butterworth is probably one of the most well-known and loved of Unity's authors and teachers. Um, and it's a very practical approach to seeing life through different eyes. That's what really practical metaphysics is. It's a different way of seeing. It's a different way of understanding ourselves. It's a different way of understanding the divine. And it's a different way of understanding the world as a result of that. And so this week we're going to be talking about the art of thinking. You know, th did you know thinking was an art? Yes. yes. You know, I remember there was a quote, uh, uh, a, a saying that uh, most people's, uh, what most people call thinking is really a rearranging of their pre prejudice. And I came across this <coughs> story, uh, um, a fellow was telling about his first experience in, in a, a political science class. And the professor said, now this is the recommended book for this class. And um, we're, uh, we're not going to actually be using it very much. I just wanted to, my purpose is to actually just get you to think. And one young man from the back of the room was angry and he raised his hand and says, you mean tell me I paid twenty-two fifty for this book and we're not going to use it? And he said, the professor smiled and said, see, you're already thinking. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about this idea of thinking. And one of the things that Eric points out is that we have a tendency to think that circumstances determine what we think. And he says that's false. Circumstance in, in no way. Incidences, experiences do not determine what we think. In fact, it's the other way around. That what we think and what we hold in our thoughts and in our awareness is what is going to determine the kind and the quality and the characteristics of the experiences and the incidences and the circumstances that show up for us in life. Now this is one of the primary and key principles in unity. And it's really a challenging one at times, however. And one of the things that Eric points out for us is it's important. In, in metaphysics, sometimes we, we, um, you hear the phrase, you, you know, you are what you think. How many of you heard that? You are what you think. He says that's not true. You are not what you think. You are thinking what you think. Can you see the difference? So you are not what you think, you are thinking what you think. So let me take it a little further, maybe uh, paraphrase it a little differently. You are not your thoughts. You're the one holding those thoughts. And there's a big difference and it's important for us to begin to identify not so much with the thoughts and the things that we are thinking as the one that is holding or the one that is doing the thinking. And that's where our true nature is. That's who we truly are. And that's the point that Eric is trying to help us to understand is that we tend to think something and think because we think it that it must be true. <laughs> Eckhart Tolle says, don't believe everything that you think. Because the reality is a good bit of what we think has nothing to do with what really exists and what really is, and it really has nothing to do with who and what we truly are. Much of what we think is actually simply programmed ideas and belief systems that we have accepted from what Charles Fillmore calls the race consciousness. And the race consciousness is basically a collect, because we really are all a part of one mind, there's a part of that mind that is basically um, uh, 
tied up in dealing with circumstance and situation. And where we run into challenges and difficulties is that we begin to identify with the thinking that is tied up in and associated with circumstances and instances and experiences and situations. And in the very act of getting tied up in that, we begin to identify with those thoughts and believe that because we're identified with them, that somehow that they're true. And part of our work is to begin to separate ourselves from identifying with thought. Now, it doesn't mean we stop thinking. You know, the reality is you're not going to ever stop thinking. It is just kind of like um, your heartbeat. It's kind of like your breathing. It's kind of like, you know, um, in some ways, it's kind of like perspiring. You're just going to do it, you know. <laughs> and it just happens as a, as, a, as a part of our nature that we're always, there are always thoughts going on. And part of our work is to make, uh, is to begin to recognize that we have, that thoughts are of two natures. We are either consciously holding a particular thought, or we are allowing a, 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 a thought to hold us that is not necessarily conscious. In other words, we may, we may or may not be choosing the thoughts, but we always have the choice. And this is one of the key ideas and understandings in practical metaphysics. That regardless of what's happening out here in the world, we don't have the ability to immediately control what is happening out here in the world as much as we would like many times we try to. We try to get the world to be the way we think it's supposed to be. That's the way I put it. How many of you try to get the world to be the way you think it's supposed to be? Yeah, we all have a tendency to do that. We try to get our... Coworkers, our husband, our wife, our children, all to be the way we think we're supposed to be so that we can feel a certain way, right? And we think if, they don't, if they're not willing to be that way, then somehow we can't feel the way we want to feel. And so therefore, if we can get them to be the way we want them to be, then we can get to feel good. How, how's that working? <laughs> How many of you can get your boss to be the way you want him to be? Doesn't work that way, does it? We try. We try a lot of times. We try different strategies for getting the world to be the way we think it's supposed to be. But it is, a, a, a Marshall Rosenberg calls it a catastrophic strategy for getting our needs met. It's a catastrophic strategy for trying to get some need that we have met because we believe that the world has to be a certain way in order for us to have our needs met. But in reality, when we began to look at our thoughts and began to choose thoughts that are somehow focused on and tuned with and in tune with the reality of who we are, let me say that again, the reality of who we are, a little bit. <laughs> When we begin to listen to that place within us that is actually the one that's doing the thinking and then begin to make decisions and choices from what Eric calls vertical thinking, he says, you know, we have horizontal thinking and we have vertical thinking. And horizontal thinking is basically dealing with all of the circumstances and situations out here in the world. And we think that, that, uh, that, that we allow our thoughts to be... Uh, um, imbued with or influenced by or uh, determined even by what we are seeing and, expe and experiencing out here in the world. We're not really thinking when we're doing that. What we're doing is we are reacting. And that's not the same thing as thinking, is it? It is simply a triggered program response. And I'm going to suggest to you, let's do a little experiment here if you're open for it. <clears throat> Think about some circumstance or situation that's going on in your life right now today that you feel is bothersome for you. Now, you don't have to think of the biggest, major thing in your life, but something that's kind of irritating you, bothering you, or really pushing your buttons. And just take a second and notice what you're thinking and feeling about that. Notice the thoughts that run through your head, and then notice any emotions that you might feel are connected to that in some way. 
maybe you're feeling angry or frustrated or sad or whatever that might be and then just take a nice deep breath and see if you can notice where you feel that in your physical body where do you feel that in your physical body anybody want to share where they in your in your side and your gut right in the middle of your head in the chest everybody tends to have different places but somehow that does show up in your body doesn't it well here's what I'm going to invite you to do I want you to think about and I mean that's not the best way to say it I want you to listen and feel that experience and see if you can recall the earliest time in your life when you felt that in your body And see if any memories come to you. Now, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But see if there's some insight or some memory that comes to you when you first experience that. And you don't necessarily have to share that with me because this is just a little exercise. But how many of you had some kind of a memory that came to you? Almost everybody, right? So what I'm suggesting to you is, when that is happening, the reality is you're not thinking. You're remembering. And what you're remembering is something that happened long before the current circumstance or situation. And the current circumstance and situation is showing up in your experience and in your life to actually bring back that memory and that experience so that it can be healed. It's for the purpose of healing. It's so that that process and that energy and that, that uh, basically energy can be transmuted into a different and a higher energy and vibration. And so we are having thoughts that we think are caused by circumstances and situation out here in the world. In reality, they're not being caused by circumstances and situation. They're being triggered by circumstances and situations from earlier experiences in our life. And they're not there to hurt us or to punish us. They're there to remind us that there's something that we still need to do some releasing about, some letting go of, some transformation. They are giving the, us the opportunity to rethink that circumstance or situation and to begin to think about it differently and to see it differently. And it began to see it from what he calls vertical thinking. Emerson called it a higher order of thinking. To have a different insight and awareness. And in the very act of doing that, we're not only transforming that circumstance and situation, if we are able to actually then go through, and this is a, a part that really, more recently, that's been really valuable for me, if we can take the time and energy to transform our thoughts about not just that circumstance or situation but the previous one that we remembered and then really learn how to love that part of ourselves that didn't know how to deal with that early on and even say to that younger part of ourselves I love you even though you don't know how to deal with this and this is all screwed up and you feel all screwed up and you feel like there's nothing you can do or you feel like you're really angry about it, if you can transform that energy into an energy of acceptance and appreciation and love for that part of you that doesn't know how to deal with it, it transforms. And you're sending and you're, you're, you're giving different energy and that actually does heal that part of yourself in such a way that whatever's going on here today, you look at it and go, so, that's no big deal. It has a different energy and vibration around it. And you begin to have different thoughts about it and begin to see that those that are involved in that are going through the same thing that you're going through, having the same kinds of triggers, maybe different experiences, but being triggered in the same sort of way. You're triggering off of each other. But if you can transform your piece of it, whatever that might be, you're coming from a higher energy, a higher vibration. You're coming from a higher level of thought, and it's a level of thought where you're actually thinking, 
rather than simply reacting. This is what we call the art of thinking. <laughs> this is real thinking. This is metaphysical thinking. This is recognizing that whatever is happening out here in the world is happening through the channel and the function of our own energy and our consciousness in such a way that is there to help us to rise to a different level of awareness, of consciousness, of possibility, of goodness, or if you like the old term, grace. <coughs> that we align ourselves with that which is even greater and which is in more in harmony and in tune with the love that the divine is in us, more in harmony and in tune with the awareness of the greater possibilities of good in this circumstance and situation, rather than what's happening with our horizontal kind of thinking. So that's my summary of an amazing chapter that has a whole lot more to it. But we're going to actually leave it at that because that's our lesson for this week. When you find yourself in a situation where you're feeling like your button is getting pushed, do this little exercise. Notice the thoughts. Notice any emotions that you have about that. Notice where you're feeling it in your body. And then see if you can recall the earliest time in your life when you felt that. And then see if you can love that part of you that is feeling that energy still from that early time in life. And when you do that, you begin to transform that energy in such a way that you are actually no longer simply reacting to a circumstance or situation. You're coming from a place of more clarity and more honesty of who and what you truly are. The one who's thinking the thoughts. And you would, one of the things Eric has to say is that uh, uh, <clears throat> I am not my thoughts. I am the one thinking my thoughts. Can you say that? I am not my thoughts. I am the one thinking my thoughts. That's our exercise for this week. That's our homework. Let's move into our meditation time. start my day with love when I start my day with love that's what I get more of more love I start my day with love when I start my day with love that's what I get more of love 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 When I start my day with peace, I feel sweet release. I choose peace. I start my day with peace. When I start my day with peace, I feel sweet release. I choose peace. Oh, peace, peace, peace. Joy. Ooh, 
everything is infused with joy. I choose joy. within you of peace that place within you where joy resides that place within you of true love and allow that love to be expressed as love for yourself for all of the parts of you parts that are experiencing peace and the parts that are experiencing joy and the parts that are not experiencing peace and joy. And just say to that part of you, any part of you, I love you. I love you. And if a thought comes into your head of doubt or not sure about that. Just say, well, that's an interesting theory. Let's see if there's a way it is possible for me to love that part of myself. Just notice the thoughts and gently say to yourself, oh, that's I have an interesting thought there, but that's not who I am. I have thoughts, but I am the one thinking the thought. I am the thinker of the thought, and I can choose can choose this thought or a different thought. I can choose this thought or a thought of peace. I can choose this thought or a thought of love. I can choose a thought of fear, of doubt, of worry, frustration, of anger, resentment. I have the choice. Or I can choose love, acceptance, appreciation, understanding, peace. Peace. These thoughts are not the real of me, the real of me chooses the thought and I choose peace, love, joy, possibility. Take now a nice deep breath. Breathing into the heart space. Allow yourself to be filled with the choices 
of peace, filled with the choices of love, filled with the choices of grace, of possibility. And so it is. Take a nice deep breath now. <clears throat> Let your awareness be in this, back here in this room, this time, this place. And give thanks for the choices. And so it is. Amen.